Hello, I'm Peter Whittle. Now, on Saturday, we are facing the prospect of yet another anti-Israel demonstration on the streets of our capital city. Doubtless, as before, it will be characterized by calls for jihad and rampant anti-Semitism, and the accompanying shows of fundamentalist Islamic strength, such as we saw last week with the mass prayers staged outside Dining Street. And of course, we will watch again the response of two British institutions. The police, who will be there to technically at least enforce the law, and the BBC, who will be reporting on it. More conclusions can any reasonable person draw from the experience of the past few weeks since the worst attack on Jewish people since the Holocaust? Well, I would say it is that the police are no longer our police. They are no longer on our side. And that the BBC is truly rotten to the core, so mired in its own ideological prejudices that it no longer acts in the interests of this country. So first, the police. Alive usually to the policing of simple tweets and opinions on social media, we have watched as they have accommodated expressions of real hatred on our streets. They have appeared supine. They have presumed to lecture us on the many meanings of jihad. And when looking out for racism or anything, quote, close to racism, they target, well, what? Why, of course, the English flag. For the moment, anything racist or even close no, to racism no, is said. No, 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 during my time as a London Assembly member, when I had numerous opportunities to scrutinise senior police, including the Commissioner, it became obvious to me that despite their protestations and their denials, everything about their actions showed that they took very different approaches to different groups. practicing effectively selective policing. We saw this most glaringly with the taking of the knee during the BLM riots. Now it's often said that the top brass of the police are at fault, but that the ordinary rank and file remain the same as ever. Well, I have to say I am not so sure. It seems to me that the whole force appears to be infused with so-called progressivism. It has entirely taken on board the politics of identity, of victimhood and of woke thinking. Because of uh, various tweets he liked, as it were, he was called by a policeman who said that uh, he had come to check his thinking. Check his thinking. How else could we arrive at a position where, amid a sea of flags and slogans, the one flag police officers object to is the English one? Now, meanwhile, the BBC continues to degrade itself, or if you like, show its true colours, by parroting the Hamas line about the Israeli targeting of a Gaza hospital, jumping to the conclusion it obviously preferred. Although it later retracted this, the damage was already done. Similarly, it has, after much pressure, stepped back from describing Hamas terrorists as militants, although the description of them it now uses as, quote, designated a terrorist group by the UK government, unquote, still sounds ambiguous and rather distant. The BBC position is clear its driving political and ideological viewpoint has been on show over the past two weeks even away from the topic of Israel. For example, it managed to air a discussion programme on BBC Two about Britain's massive housing crisis without a single mention, not one, of the effect of immigration through the entire one-hour show. 
When you consider that our population has increased by 8 million in just two decades, that represents the entire population of Sweden, by the way, it is obvious that at the BBC, left-wing ideology has replaced simple facts. And then just this week past, on CBBC, no less, there was a disgusting attempt to indoctrinate children on the ideology of white privilege. How indeed they had it and how they might atone for it. Whether it be active or by omission, the corporation's outrageous bias can no longer be denied even by its staunchest supporters. Both the BBC and the police require public consent to operate effectively. Neither of them deserve it right now. People like me have been saying this for a long time. I think the difference now is that this realisation is dawning on millions more. What's also dawned on people is that the country has an increasing number of people who not only do not like this country, but don't share any of its values. What do we need to do? Well, first of all, I think there should be an outright ban on any further mass migration into this country. And as for the BBC and the police, or well, the BBC should lose its license fee, that's the least that can happen. And the police need a root and branch reform. I think the country and its future depends on it. Thank you. Hello, if you're enjoying the New Culture Forum channel and you believe in our mission, may I invite you to join our membership scheme at the link below or on our website, newcultureforum.org.uk. Our work is more important now than ever and we have great plans ahead for the future, but we can't do it without your support. From as little as three pounds per month, you can help ensure that we continue on our mission. As a member, you'll receive a range of benefits, including access to exclusive content, invitations to our private events, including here at our studios, free copies of our books, and much, much more, including, of course, our famous NCF mug. If you aren't able to become a member, then please help us by clicking this button and subscribing to our channel. It's completely free. Just remember to also click the bell icon so that you can get notifications when we post new videos. Thank you.